St. Lawrence Seaway is one of Canada's longest standing shipping routes. Every type of cargo imaginable has traversed these waterways at one time or another. Today, the waterway is also used recreationally and plays host to hundreds of visitors who stay in cottages and liveaboards as they enjoy the warm water and take in the beautiful sights. This week, the dive team heads out to Brockville to explore a number of wrecks and shore dives in the area. The team arrives a day early to the rental cabin at Ivy Lee Campground. Each diver does a last-minute gear check to be sure that everything is packed and in working order, ready to go for the morning's dives. Conestoga was an iron-clad wooden steam freighter, 252 feet long. It is truly an artificial roof with its peeling iron hull providing safety to the rock bass who congregate within its hidden spaces. This dive is a must-see for all drift certified divers. Here, in waters as deep as only 25 feet, it is not unheard of to snorkel this wreck, though it is best explored using scuba equipment. A fire started in the engine room of the Conestoga while she was waiting passage through a lock near Cardinal, and the ship was pushed off and left to drift downstream where it burned and sank. Macro photographers will enjoy the intricate shapes of the sponges encrusted along the hull of the ship. Unlike marine sponge, freshwater sponge have adapted to the extreme environmental conditions in Canada and will become dormant when exposed to excessive cold situations. The highly resistant buds can live dormant after the mother sponge has died, and when conditions improve, the buds will germinate into new growth. The seaway itself is a host to a multitude of freshwater species, like this freshwater drum. The males of this species can use their air bladder to produce a drumming sound. These fish have strong teeth and have been known to feed on zebra mussels. All in all, the dive team enjoyed exploring the wreck of the Conestoga despite the strong current. This is a dive you should not miss. Do not forget to bring your camera. After a relaxing night in the cabin, the dive team is off for a day of deep dives in the St. Lawrence. Our boat sets out from Thousand Islands docks in Rockport, Ontario. The team eagerly discuss the dive itinerary for the day. We'll be seeing two popular and very different wrecks. Soon, the Osprey is loaded up, and Captain Wayne does a final check on the engines before the team is off. Our destination is the wreck of the Key Storm. Remember to bring your passport. The Keystorm is in American waters. Elaine and Bud both carry pony tanks for the deep dive. One has oxygen for decompression, while the other bottle carries extra air in case of a diver emergency. The Keystorm was a 258 foot long cargo steamer. On a foggy October 12, 1912, on her way to Montreal, she struck an island shoal. Pumps were turned on as soon as the crew realized what had happened, but the key storm sank with her load of coal after five hours. The stern sits at 120 feet while the bow lies at the side of the shoal in only 25 feet of water. The entire ship is on its side and makes for a very interesting dive. Here, Bud leads the way to the propeller at the stern. The boat blocks much of the current, and divers will find that it is a reasonably calm dive when they remain on the top side of the wreck. There are a few places that penetration is possible, though it is not recommended due to the disorienting features of the wreck.
the angle of the boat makes a wonderful backdrop for photography, and both Jimmy and Elaine have brought their underwater camera systems to capture the essence of the wreck. The Keystorm is residence for many large bass who seem to congregate most near the bottom of a seaway floor. This wreck is considered an advanced dive due to its maximum depth of 120 feet, but a novice diver may be welcome to explore the shallower section as long as they're careful to monitor their descent. The current on our next dive is also quite strong, so Bud and the team descend directly along the rope, hand over hand, until the bottom is visible. The 130-foot Kinghorn sank in a storm in 1897 while carrying a load of wheat to Montreal. Much of her wooden hull has eroded over time, leaving an excellent training ground for wreck penetration instruction. Bud is careful not to stir up the sediment on the floor of the bank. In the dark corners we can see more of the familiar rock bass, easily distinguished by their red eyes and love of small dark spaces. After swimming the length of the boat from the inside, Bud leads the team to her top deck and is met with a school of walleye. These fast swimming fish move effortlessly in the current. When the sunlight catches them, the walleye have a pretty green shimmer to them with white fin tips. These fish have large eyes and are capable hunters, even at night when they search for fish, leeches, crustaceans, mollusks, and frogs. At the front of the boat, we are greeted by a school of bass who rest from the current at the bow. At a maximum depth of 95 feet, the Kinghorn has been an awesome second deep dive of the day. Thank you for joining the dive team on the Conestoga, the Keystorm, and the Kinghorn. Join us again next time for more deep dive fun.